Now it's back-to-back -back AFC championships in something that every single year we will be expecting mm -hmm. a at least 11 to 17 win season. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, no pressure. Head coach of the Bengals, who have an indoor facility now, Zach Taylor. Yeah. That's right. I appreciate you guys having me on. That's quite the introduction. Hey, coach, you deserve it, man. And I think we've been pretty open with you that, like, the first couple years, whenever you got to the Cincinnati Bengals, we had the same thoughts as literally everybody because it's not easy to be a head coach in the NFL. There's a lot of fired head coaches. I forget the number. It was like $200 million or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like 500 800 maybe. Yeah, whatever the number was, was being paid to fired coaches in the NFL by the owners across the NFL because there's not a lot of patience and it's not an easy job. Those first two years, I assume you would even say tough, very tough. But then you kind of get your culture instilled. Now you have your team there. You got your trigger man, we well, hope, with his calf. Yeah. You got incredible weapons. You got a defense that's there. Expectations are high. What is life like now, knowing that the expectations are vastly different than what it was before? And how do you handle that with your team? That's, that's what we've always wanted from the jump. You know, since we were 0-12 and no one's at the game, rightfully so, and we're struggling just to get a win. And now the expectations are very high. This is what we, we signed up for when we got here. And so we welcome those expectations. We're excited for the season to get going. Do you have to change why you talk to the team with uh, expectations? Obviously, it's different teams. You talk to them differently. Have you changed since those days? Has the message changed? Or what is it? How is it for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure things have subtly evolved for me and the team. But, but really, these guys are guys that kind of have a built-in chip on their shoulder no matter what. Um, that's a big reason why a lot of them are here. And so you combine all those those types of guys and types of personalities and they've always got that right edge to them and so you don't need to you don't always need to construct a message to get them going these guys it's pretty built in for who they are and I think that's why we've had success the last two years the way we've had it so what do you do during the off season now that your team is where it is are you trying to figure out how to get better how do we get AFC is fucking loaded coach mm -hmm. and now obviously yeah. the NFL is hard every Conference is loaded. Every division is loaded. Yeah. It's the NFL. But the AFC right now, because of you guys and because of the other teams in the AFC, is very, very loaded. Do you have to think about new strategies, new schemes? How do we get over the hump? How do we go further? Or is it just we got to do what we got to do and get better at our shit? Like, how, how is the offseason for you as a head coach of a team that's expected to win a Super Bowl basically every year now? Yeah, you said it. I mean, it's a combination of the two. We, we've got really good players so you don't want to you don't want to deviate too much from what they've done really well over the last couple of years. But at the same time, you got to continue to evolve and tweak um, as teams are trying to catch up to you. So the one thing we, we believe is this is the toughest division in all of football, the AFC North. Yeah. And and so if you can win the division, be in contention for the division, you're battle tested and ready for the playoffs. And so again, that, that's what this division serves us so well when you're competing against those three other teams and the histories and the players and the coaching staffs they have. It gets you ready for December and January football, and that's what we found these last two years. And so we, we strive to be the best team in the division. If you can come out alive, you got a pretty good path in the playoffs. Thomas said it's hot in the kitchen. The AFC North, it's hot in the kitchen every single year. Smash mouth football due to how the stadiums are constructed and how weather happens. You have to be tough. You're the play caller, though, and you got Joe Burrow, okay? And you got Jamar Chase out there. And you got mm -hmm. T. Higgins out. You got mm -hmm. weapons everywhere. How hard is it not to just have him – throw the ball 65 times. <laughs> uh, honestly, like, as a play, with how much talent you have, you put me in Madden, and I'm not good at video <laughs> games, but you put me in yeah. Madden and I have the talent you have, it's like, sweet, every fucking play, we are wide open. As a play caller, how have you developed with this team, and is it hard not to just go at, uh, with all the weapons that you have? Yeah, we get pretty close. We, we throw the ball quite a bit. <laughs> we leave those guys on the field, and... I think Jamar had almost 100 plays in the season opener last year against Pittsburgh. Uh, he was targeted I, I don't even know how many times. So uh, that, that's certainly a mentality that we have. At the same time, we're playing some pretty good defensive lines, so you got to do what you can to take the pressure off the line and hand the ball off and, and run some of the things that can manipulate the defense that way. But, but yeah, you said it. we got a good group of receivers, and – uh, we don't want to let everybody off the hook by not trying to get them the ball as much as possible. Yeah, I don't know how Joe is going to keep everybody happy with that ball, but mm -hmm. yeah, I did. guess you have him on the field for 100 plays. Yeah. Hey, we fucking tried. Yeah. Yeah. We had you, you know, we had you out there the whole the whole time. Uh, whenever you talk about your offense and being able to have to run the ball to help the defensive line in, in everything, all the defenses that you're going to kind of face, you guys didn't have an O line for a while. 
documented. We all saw it. It was a big part of the conversation. Now, you had humans standing in there, but for whatever reason, they were turnstiles, and Joey Burrow was getting broken in half. And you guys were still winning games, though. Like, still, he got seven times against the Titans in the playoffs, win. Yes. yes. Then next one, I think, like, nine times Yep. on the road, win. Win. And yep. then Super Bowl, I think he – Eight. Eight times. Eight, eight mm -hmm. times. Last play, mm -hmm. going to get it again. Almost, I mean, we're like this. So everybody knew that entire offseason, got to fix it, got to fix it, got to fix it. You guys invest in it. Then for like the first six, seven weeks maybe, and then it kind of settled in. What was it you think that really got your guys to the turning point to become a good group together? And was there any moments where you worried, like we're never going to be able to figure out this offensive line? No, I think that culture in that line room has really evolved over the last four years. You know, Frank Pollock's been here. Uh, he's worked really hard to establish the culture he wants in there. We've got the guys that fit that culture, um, signed some free agents, drafted some guys. So we feel really good about where that room's at and the identity that they have. And, um, you know, they're always together. You're in the weight room. You see them in the, the sauna. You see them in the weight room. They're always together. They're always eating together. And that's that's the type of bowling culture that we want from our guys. And so, uh, again, I'm proud of the room that we got right now, and we're expecting big things from those guys. Were you ever worried, though, that Joey Burrow was going to die on a football field? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, I see a lot of quarterbacks get injured over the course of the season. You know, if you look around from team to team at the end of last season, um, that's just the nature of the game, man. The, the great ones tend to hang on to that ball a little bit longer to the last second to make sure that they can let that guy get open and, uh, you know, they're going to scramble if needed. And so sometimes those guys are going to take some hits. And, you know, I, I think Joe, if, if he wasn't playing football, he'd be like an MMA fighter or if he had to go to the other side of the ball, he'd be a linebacker. So that's just kind of his mentality a little bit. I think he likes it to an extent. Uh, we got to do our best to protect him. But uh, that's just kind of the mentality that Joe's got. Yeah, I like, I got, we got visibly frustrated with him whenever he told us, and this was after he took that one shot in Philly where his head yep. actually went <laughs> off of his body. Yep. And then, that was on a naked. He reversed course on a naked. You know, we're, we're going out one way. There's no protection the other way, and he reversed course. And I think Fletcher Cox or one of those guys got him. Yeah, yep. and it was clean. I, I've never yeah. seen that clean of a shot. His head off, yeah. back, with the helmet off the body mm -hmm. and then he came yeah. back in i think you guys tied the game i yeah. think mm -hmm. is how the whole thing ended so he came on our show and it's always great to chat with him and you know i asked him like hey i, I saw you lose your head against philadelphia and then like there's these other shots you took like i was a teammate with andrew luck like i understand that it's like cool and that's what football is to you but you need to like think about the whole program here you know yeah. and the, the, the whole nfl and he said i like getting hit i have to get hit if i don't get hit i don't feel like i'm in a game and i was like oh no joe like <laughs> joe this is not what we need to hear but i think that's what makes yeah. him great though what have you seen from him another year and obviously we know the calf but like joe seems to have it right i mean like Everything that they talk about, all those top caliber athletes in every sport, yeah. the competitive drive, the spite seemingly, the work ethic, the humility, he has it all. That's what we see from outside. What do you see from behind closed doors from when he came into the league to where he is now? And what do you think about him as a competitor as a whole? Yeah, you said it. Uh, he's different. He's rare. I, you have to be around him to be able to describe him. You know, if I sat here and someone hasn't met him and and they ask for a description of him, I say, I can't do it. You know, he's um, he's got an edge to him at all times. Uh, he's just got that killer instinct and he's a, he's a champion, you know, and he won't settle for anything less. And so that's that's what you want in your quarterback. You've been around some great ones before. Uh, there's kind of a quality that's indescribable and that's what Joe has. And so, again, he's had a great attitude um, here in the building. We'll be excited to get him on the field whenever that happens and uh, he'll be ready to go and lead us to a great year. I saw him running with that sports bra on. Yeah, he looked good. Yeah. He had that sports bra on that he was throwing. Yeah. I saw him on his – did you see that, Coach? I, it was on the internet. I don't the know if catapult. you saw it. Yeah, you're talking about the catapult. Yeah. Yeah, they got to make that different. I, I mean, you do whatever you got to do, but they're sure. putting some people in some interesting spots. You know, they, they are – not that it's a bad thing. I mean – Every week. I wear a tank top every day of my fucking life, so I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but there are some things that kind of pop up, but we did see him moving. You guys are having no worries about Joe Burrow and his comeback time and everything like that? I feel good about the progress he's making right now. That's what you're getting out of me. A few weeks out from a few weeks. I think I could really start picking, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're, you're, you're like a real good guy. So uh, last question for me, and I know Pac and the boys have some, and we appreciate your time in the middle of watching. Yeah. How'd the boys do, by the way? What are we watching here? How'd, how'd practice go? Practice was good. Yeah, yes. Uh, two days ago, we had a great practice. So we'll get back at it today and then get on the plane and go see Arthur Smith and his crew uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Anything you want me to say to him? He's coming on like an hour. No, we, we, we texted a little bit earlier, so I think we're on the same page. So, 
Yeah, nothing, nothing needed for me. All right, let's stay away from the quarterback, stay away from the kickers, yep. stay away from the punters. Mm -hmm. We're not bringing any blitzes, hey, speaking right? Of, speaking of kickers, Pat, speaking of kickers, 2007, I'm playing in the CFL, bored out of my mind, and I played college fantasy football, and, and you were the kicker on that team in 2007. So I've kind of always had a soft spot for you. Um, all the games you helped me win there in 2007 playing college fantasy football <laughs> when I was in a hotel room in Winnipeg, Manitoba. You're playing college fantasy football? You love fucking football, I was. Bro. You love football. I was. Yeah. Play I, or I was really bored. We only had four-hour work days from 8 to noon, and so I had to figure out a way to spend my time from noon on. And uh, so I, I played college fantasy football, and you were a big part of that. Man, I missed a few that year. I, I, you know, I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know the pressure of what was going on up in Canada. I wish I, wish I, I could have made your life a little bit better there a couple different days. But, boy, if I knew where that ball was going more often, that would have been a whole different story, you know? Mm -hmm. I was going to hit it every time. I was going to kick the ball mm -hmm. every single time. Sure. Hard. I'm oh, going yeah. for it. Didn't always know where it was going, Zach. Your guy right now, he's going to be like one of the greats when it's all said and done, old Money Mac. Yeah. He's phenomenal, bro. He's on a great pace, you know, and he's, again, he's just happy-go-lucky guy. Same attitude every single day. Doesn't ride the highs and the lows. And uh, pretty dang good golfer also. How are you? Are you a stick? No, terrible. Uh, 19 handicap. Oh, okay, bogey golfer. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Hey, yeah, you are a stop. That. Bean, you know, Bean from uh, Buffalo, the GM, he came in here and sandbagged us. Yeah, yeah. Just took us for $50,000 charity yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like a four or five. Who has the fucking time? Ridiculous. How do you have the time? I, you, Kevin Huber. Kevin Huber was my, my partner in my member guest tournament I played in this summer, so he always carries me to, to a pretty good victory there. So what you say, hey, Kevin, you're going to have to fucking retire. You don't have it anymore, but also <laughs> need you to golf with me? Is that how that went? Correct. That's exactly how it works. I love Huber, man. He, I went to college, same time as him. When you were doing college football fantasy, I hope you drafted him because he was really good at Cincinnati or whatever. Then we get drafted same year, him obviously before me. Then every training camp, you know, Colts and Bengals played. So, like, I've stayed very close to Huber. What a legend. Absolute legend. Moving on from him, probably not easy at all for anybody in that building, I'd assume. No, it's a challenge, but he's still around. You know, he still comes to practice and came to the preseason game and – I went to his retirement party the other night, so he's he's doing really well. Was the retirement party at the Blind Pig here? Listen, this is a cool thing. We pulled up this picture. Yeah. It, because, honestly, when I saw it happen, it made me feel like it was like what people describe as the old days. You know what I mean? Like, back in the day, it is thought that the celebrations in the cities after, like, football games or something good happened, everybody somehow at the same place – Everybody sharing the same moment with the same vibes. So whenever you were on a microphone, I think, at this place saying, hey, this game ball is for all of you, I'm like, how did they pick that bar? Is that where Zach gets boosted up at? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that where he's a regular? And also, how did this become a thing? I think everybody should have this. I'm sure Cincinnati loves everything about this out of you. Well, the first bar I gave it to, uh, Matt Lookout Tavern, is right by my house. So I drive by it twice a day, on the way to work, on the way home. Always see people in there, always kind of envious of, hey, on a Thursday night, Sunday night, that's what they get to do. They while got we're dollar wells. <laughs> Damn. I yeah, got... I don't know what they got in there, but but anyway, as we're walking off the field sure. to beat the Raiders for that first playoff win in however many years, uh, I'm immediately trying to get the ball and and get someone to write, it, write the, the score on the ball and send it into that play. So we've had a fun experience doing it. It's pretty random how we choose them. Uh, the real challenge is after away games, when we get back at midnight, calling the bars to see if they're going to be open while also not trying to give away what we're doing because I like it to be a surprise and, and you walk in and nobody knows where you're coming. So I've been hung up on many times trying to call a bar to make sure they stay open and they keep hanging up on me at midnight. Um, so there's been a couple missed opportunities by a couple places here in town. Well, they need to say, hey, listen, Ohio, Yikes. okay, in the Cincinnati area, let's stay on our P's yeah. and Q's. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to celebrate this dub. That's old school, Zach. That's old. Uh, that's not like – that doesn't feel like a 2023 thing at all. Your whole team feels – Old school. Like, Joey feels like an old school guy. Mm -hmm. The way Lou Anna Rumo. And yeah. I, I mean, you take care. You got like an old school college feel over there. Do you guys sense that? Do you sense that in the building? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I really do. I mean, these guys are, uh, they want physical practices. Uh, we also do a great job, I think, taking care of them during training camps or the first throughout the year. But they got that mentality, you know, and it's, uh, I, I can probably list 20 guys, you know, that I think are big time leaders on this team. And, uh, so, again, we're, I think these guys are built to the right stuff, and, and that's why we've had the success that we've had. Hell, yeah. Hey, you, you do pretty good, too, pal. Yeah, yeah you do pretty yeah. good, too. I Pac has a question for you, Zach. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you, Coach, you're doing a great job with a bucket hat team. You know, we wear bucket hats. Uh, my first uh, question was, um, the defensive line and the linebackers look great. We lost two safety last year. 
But Cam looked really good yesterday. DJ Turner looked good also yesterday. I think Lou is doing a great job. Can you um, tell us about the young guys in the secondary um, uh, and yeah. the safeties? Yeah, so I'll start with the safeties. You know, we took Dax Hill in the first round two years ago. Uh, he played a smaller role last year. But now that we lost Jesse and Vaughn, he's going to have to step up and sign Nick Scott from the Rams, who played four years there. Uh, took Jordan Battle in the third round from Alabama. We think highly of him. So it's a good mix of guys uh, that are going to fit into that room. And then, like you mentioned, you know, we got Cheeto Wuzier coming back off of the ACL. Oh, yeah. You know, he'll be back here sometime. And um, so, again, he's he's a starting corner, high-end corner in this league. You got DJ Turner, Cam Taylor Britt, Mike Hilton. We feel like we got a really good group in there on defense. Yeah, nobody will hire Lou. So that's Thank good. God. No, that's we, good we, for we, you guys. We don't want awesome. Lou to go nowhere. Yeah, I understand. That's I keep true. calling all these owners, telling them how bad he is. So, See, yeah, so <laughs> it is you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is you. sense. Because we're out here wondering, because he comes on the show, he's awesome. Uh -huh. yep. Like, absolutely awesome on the show. Your guys' team, incredible on the defensive side of the ball. Seems like everybody's bought in on every single play. It's like, that's what we're looking for right there. And then it's like, how many times have you been interviewed? Like, ah, like four times or something like that. How many years? Yeah. 70 years. What? <laughs> what the fuck happened? How, how did this happen? But I understand it's good for you guys, but as a team that's been through like six coaches here, you know, in like the last seven years, mm -hmm. I don't know how we didn't let Paisano slip through our grasp. One here. time. There I'm, hey, early preseason, early training camp, defense beat offense always, or are you keeping track of that type of stuff? Yeah, I don't always like to look at it that way. Uh, if I feel like it's tilting that way, I might have to set up a drill where it goes the other way. Real yeah, fast. smart, smart. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, we did a get back on track drill yesterday, and the defense, you know, they they won that drill. And I'm calling plays on second ten, third nine, and I thought that's the last time I'm ever doing this drill. So you walk up and feel pretty bit feeling bad about yourself. Uh, so we try to set it up to where we have a little bit of success on both sides. All right. We're going seven on three. Yes. Seven on three. You guys get uh, one single high safety, two corners, and then we get to kind of run yeah. our thing. <laughs> I love that. I love everything about that. Connor has a question for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach, you just mentioned kind of the physicality of the practices and how the guys like that. But, I mean, summer days in Ohio, it's not always, you know, the coolest. It can get a little hot. How do you kind of temper expectations with fighting during the mm. preseason, because obviously that's a big thing on the internet now, especially with the joint practices. Like you guys going to Atlanta, I assumed you might have told Artie Smith, like, "Hey, our guys might kick the shit out of you because they've been waiting <laughs> to fight some dudes for a while." But how do you kind of relay that to the team and also still want to have that fire in the practices? Yeah, we. I mean, we we preach. You know, in a game, it's a penalty, but I get that these guys go against each other enough. Uh, to where their frustrations can can get the best of them sometimes. We, we practiced with the Packers last week. We got in two fights, um, told the team no fighting, got in two fights. It, it kind of guys were able to get it out of their system a little bit. Nobody got hurt. Oh, are you practice. losing the locker Everybody room? Right Whoa. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> you told them no so it was, uh -oh. it was, it was uh, you know, in the moment, it's not what we wanted, but but the guys were able to handle their business on the next play and, and get good work done. So um, they got out of their system, and we had a good practice. It's impossible. Like – we have talked about it as yeah. impossible. Imp impossible. impossible. Yeah. I don't know. It is a, I don't even know how you would. I appreciate that the coaches have to say that. Like D'Amico Ryans yesterday, who's probably been in. In them. Oh, yeah. 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 I have no idea how many. He's like, yeah, we got to tell him we got work to do here. You know, we're not trying to waste our time on fights. I'm like, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> Just as somebody that has been on the other side right behind everybody. Right. Just watching, like I don't think anybody's <laughs> hearing that message. Yeah, it's I, possible. I think that one's going in one, right out the other. But it's good if your team didn't. Wouldn't you be worried? I think. I, I think. Sure. Yeah, I, we might not have had any fights my first two years here, so it might be a good thing that we got in a few uh, last year with the Rams and this year with the Packers. Okay, let the boys go ahead yeah. sort it. Yeah, I, Look at you getting a culture. I love that. Go ahead, Tone. Coach, uh, you talked about the division and the AFC North and how tough it is. Um, Harbaugh and Tomlin have been there for a combined probably 40 years, I, I think now. Has the interactions with them who've been there forever, has it changed from your rookie season as a head coach to now coming off back-to-back -back AFC championship games? I, I don't think it's changed. You know, it's um, everyone's always cordial with each other. Obviously, we've had different in-game experiences now. The first two years, they, they beat us every time, basically. And these last two years, um, it's been a lot more even. So, uh, But they it's always respectful. Those guys. You know, I, I think those guys have done a great job with, <laughs> with their teams. And, and so it's always a respectful attitude towards each other. Who would win in a fight, you think? Tomlin, right? Probably. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a quarterback at heart. So I haven't been in a whole lot of fights in my life. So I, I don't. 
I'd give my best, though, Pat. I can promise you that. I'd, I'd go down fighting. I, lo I think Cincinnati loves to hear that. Yeah. Speaking of Cincinnati, whenever you guys got, like, an Ohio guy as your quarterback, is there anything yeah. better? Your like, that stadium, the jungle, it is – watching at home, it feels different from watching it. It's like – Hey, it's, that's a college atmosphere there. Like the, the crowd, the city. You said the first couple of years, obviously, there wasn't some people, it wasn't filled up every single home game because you guys started 0-12 and the team was like, this ain't what we're spending our money on if this is uh -uh. what you're doing. Now, complete opposite. Yeah. Com what do you think about the Bengals fans as a whole and where do you rank them across the league? And I know this is like a super pander question, but I think it is like a real thing to talk about because some fan bases really affect, I think, like how the team performs. And it feels yep. like your atmosphere is one of those now, especially with how Joey is getting momentum going. It's like that's a real home field advantage in the NFL where there isn't a bunch of them, I don't think. You're exactly right. And my first exposure to this city was in 2012. I was at the Dolphins. We played, you know, those 2012 Bengals teams. That was Those are good, hard-nosed teams. And we came up here. We stayed the night. UC had a game the night before. Then we played the Bengals the next day. And I remember walking away thinking, this place is incredible. You know, I've never been to Cincinnati before, but their fan base in both college and pro is is next to none. And I've really experienced that over the last five years here. Uh, we feed off these people. They feed off of us as well. And so it's a, it's a small, big city, you know. And so you feel like you know everybody around it's not one of those those big uh new york or anything like that and um so i've really enjoyed being here and, and like you said we feed off our fans i think our fans feed off of us gotta keep that show going yep with that in mind ty has a question for you yeah coach i know this isn't necessarily your jurisdiction completely but after justin herbert's contract gets done everyone immediately mm. goes and says okay well when are the Bengals gonna get joe herbert or uh you know burrow done and then not on, on top of that you know you got <laughs> Jamar Chase and T Higgins. Is that the kind of thing where like, are you just kind of letting Duke handle all that stuff? Like, is, is it difficult navigating that? Is that something you have to constantly keep tabs on? Or is it one of those things where, Hey, I'm, I'm just assuming these, they, these guys know we want them in Cincinnati yeah. and something's going to get done. And I'll just kind of worry about the, the day-to-day -day stuff on the field. Yeah. I, I really leave that to the front office. I found that's better. Um, but again, I always told the players I'm a resource if you need it, but we, we've been really fortunate that these guys have gone about their business the right way, you know, and not creating any issues with us. And, um, so been fortunate that way. Again, these guys know I'm here if they want to talk about it, but I do leave that to the front office and let them, let them handle all that. Why don't you guys just give them all the max contracts? Yeah. yeah. Void yeah. years. <laughs> That's how it works. You know what I mean? That is, that is hundred percent how it works out here. You've done an incredible yeah. job coaching that team bringing in a culture that I think everybody fears now, the Cincinnati Bengals. Nobody wants to play the Bengals anymore. You should be incredibly proud of that. And you got an indoor dome, huh? Yeah. We're using that. We're using it, aren't you? are yeah. using it? We just did our walkthrough in there 10 minutes ago. It was wow. great. Soft? You feel like you're getting softer as a team? or you No, I don't. I sure don't. No, we got it last <laughs> October. We use it about three days a week. It's been outstanding. No, you guys, it'll make you soft. I heard yeah. I heard yeah, the reason because it make you soft. <laughs> Elements. You know what happens? You know what? I did play the opposite side of the coin for the three years leading up to having it. You know, we got to be outside. We're playing all of our games outside. The road to the Super Bowl is always outside in stadiums. And uh, but now I've 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 softened that stance a little bit over the last year. It seems like a, a lot of stuff done got better over there. I had a chance to run through the building the other day with the recovery room, the new glasses, yep. all of the shit that y'all pull in the back. Uh, Mr. Jump, Mr. Brown, putting a lot of money in there. Yeah, the, the cryo, the red light therapy, the float tank, all that Ooh, stuff. Red light. All that stuff's getting in place right now, so it's it, the guys are enjoying it. Yeah. Really? You're spending float money. Tank. Hey, let's go. Hey, that's good news. Float tank. We love that. I know you love that uh, because your players love that, which makes your life easier so you don't have to deal with people bitching. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to everybody over there. Good luck at practice. Good luck the rest of the way, and we hope to chat with you again soon. Awesome. Appreciate it, fellas. All right, good luck out there. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals with an upgraded facility. Oh, yeah. Zach Taylor out of here. Exactly. Hey, Zach.